Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to my recap of Season 2, Episode 7 of Insecure. So, I've been trying to avoid acknowledging this, but I think I'm too old to relate to the characters on this show. I am no longer in my 20s. I know, surprise, surprise, I look great for my age. Thank you so much. I think, like, once you pass 30, a lot of things that you really gave a about in your 20s, you just don't care about anymore. Some of the things that Issa and Molly are like so upset about, I'm just like, for instance, the episode starts with Issa telling Molly about how Daniel busts in her face and Molly shares her outrage. Molly's like, oh my God, we're going to get like a gun and we're going to shoot rotten eggs at his house. And I'm like, because he busted in your face? I could see if he held her head there and then like splashed on her and she just could not move. But you pulled the trigger and you're surprised that the bullet came out. I... I just, I don't get it. I kind of expected that Molly, given her sexcapades in the past, would be like, girl, you tripping. But Molly is like gassing her up. And I'm like, both of y'all sound stupid. When she finally talks to Daniel later in the episode, he calls and apologizes. And Issa's like, okay. And then he makes that dumbass comment. He was like, yeah, well, I guess we're even. I honestly don't think he splashed on her as revenge. I think his comment was just sort of like, well, you know, you offended me. And now I've done something that offended you. Like, ha ha. And then Issa's like, don't you ever call me again. Sis, you got to get some perspective and some control. The man didn't slap you. He busted in your face on accident because you didn't move when he said I'm coming and as much as I love seeing Daniel on this show I hope he never speaks to you again because you're acting like a child in that same conversation your girl Miss Molly she admits that she's still seeing Dro with no intention to stop and Issa got a little judgy with her about that you don't have no room for nobody's judgment right now she and Issa get a little testy with one another I understand why y'all are friends this is a classic birds of a feather flock together speaking of buses your girl is riding one yet again this episode she ends up sitting next to a Latino student who actually goes to the school that Issa teaches at he's prepping for the PSAT and Issa's like hey you know we have this program at the school maybe you should swing by and the kids like the principal told me that that was full and there was no room for me so Issa finally has an aha moment she goes to frizzy hair at her job who gives her much shade and Issa's finally like you know what you were right and I'm gonna say something Issa goes to the school she approaches the principal and she's like hey you know you got me twisted which really he didn't and he blows her off he's like nobody died so also on the job front, Molly is in Chicago. She's hanging out with Preacher Body. He's not Molly's type. Molly tends to go for, I would guess, based on Dro and the other dude with the red hair. The singer. You know what I'm talking about. But I would guess that Molly kind of goes for, like, that light-skinned, silky hair situation. And Preacher Body is not that. But he seems like a good dude. I don't really feel good about her dating somebody at her job. Especially given how sloppy and messy Molly can be with her feelings and how she treats people. And I would rather Molly date him, a single man, than Dro a married man in an allegedly open relationship. And speaking of Dro, he comes by Molly's house. He's bringing groceries. Like he's in real boyfriend mode and he has Molly's keys and she's like, oh, keep them. I know y'all have known each other for a long time, but you've only been dating for a hot minute and you already given up the keys to the apartment. Tiffany's husband, Derek, his birthday dinner is coming up and Dro mentions that he's going to be attending with his wife and Molly brushes it off like she's cool with it but I'm like are you really? Dro tells her always remember that there's an us. What, what does that mean exactly? Th this whole open relationship thing just confuses me. On the job front Molly finally gets the boss to go talk to the higher ups at her job and ask for a promotion. She tells them all the great work she's been doing in the billable hours. Basically like run me my money that you know you've been running to someone else. And they completely curb her. Thanks for coming. Come again in a year. I think that conversation should have made the decision for Molly about staying with that job or moving on because clearly they don't value you the same way that they value the white guy who works less and produces less because they're paying him and they know what they're not paying you. It's time for Molly to move on from that job. Lawrence is still working at the office. His coworkers are chiding him about going out with one of his coworkers. She came back and told the whole office that they'd been on a date. Lawrence had to pull her to the side and he was like, hey, 
you know, I've made the habit of moving too fast before. I just want to take things slow. Don't want a lot of people in my business. I see that as a huge red flag. You, you don't understand the basics of discretion. That's a really bad trait when you're talking about dating a coworker. Lawrence completely overlooks that. They're still on for drinks coming up. Later, he remembers that he's supposed to go to Derek's birthday party. He tells old girl from the office, yeah, I know we're supposed to catch drinks, but I have to go to this thing and my ex is going to be there. And she's like, oh, okay, I'll go. I know there's a part of Lawrence that still wants to get back at Issa for cheating on him. It says something about her that she's so eager to go and play new chick in front of your ex chick. If I was Lawrence, I would be very wary of her. Speaking of this god awful party, like this was just a shit show from the beginning. Inviting two exes, one who cheated on the other and they have unresolved issues and this is going to be the first time that they see each other to your man's birthday party. Tiffany, Molly, and Issa sitting up in the C-suite of Team Bad Decisions. Like... That was never going to end well. When Tiffany texts Issa to say that Lawrence was coming, Issa should have said, no, that's not okay. There's no real need for Lawrence to be there. And yes, it's his boy's birthday. You didn't invite me to your birthday dinner party. It's not something that a dude is going to have his boxers and a bunch over. Lawrence easily could not have been invited to that party and he would have understood and would have been absolutely fine. Kelly arrives with the dude who fingered her under the table. Dro walks in with his wife, Candace. Molly is there. Awkward. I'm still not all that convinced that Candace knows that she's in an open relationship. Ding, ding, ding. The bell rings. Everybody goes to sit down. Dro pulls out a chair. So he's going to sit between his wife and Molly at the dinner party like he has two dates. Tiffany promptly approaches Molly and was like, ma'am, do you see this name card? So Molly sits through the whole dinner party watching her boo and his wife interact and basically ignore her. Like, she can't get a word in edgewise she's looking at them like canoodle and be sweet and carry on couples conversation which she is no part of Issa arrives with her brother she and molly share shady pleasantries they're still testy from their conversation at the beginning of the episode Issa ain't been there but a minute when lawrence walks in with old girl awkward he's like oh i, I didn't know it was a dinner party Issa is mortified lawrence and old girl go sit at the end of the table and i'm trying to figure out why you got this girl here lawrence you bringing this chick that you're not really sure what you want to do with to a room full of your ex-girlfriend's friends Lawrence does this all shucks. I had no idea. How could this happen? My bad. Dude, you're not that dumb. Dude, take some accountability for the dumb that you create. I cringed through so much of that dinner party. Issa keeps stealing glances at Lawrence. Issa sat there and took that as long as she could. She finally gets up and walks out. Lawrence goes after her. Issa calls him out on bringing this new chick to a party with her friends. Fair game. But then she brings up Lawrence blocking her on Facebook. To be mad about being blocked by the dude that you cheated on? How, ma'am? How? For you to expect the ex that you cheated on to take your feelings into consideration? You're asking a lot. And more than really, you have a right to ask for. Lawrence kept it funky. He was like, yeah, I blocked you. And I blocked you because I was tired of seeing pictures of you and the dude that you cheated on me with. Fair very fair and then he asked you still in that well yeah she is but if y'all are no longer together i don't see why she wouldn't be and because lawrence got time today lawrence is like you're a music producer's groupie when that scene was happening i was freaking out like i was watching a boxing match like i was like oh my god so much animosity, so much lack of communication, so much paranoia. Like, it all came out in that disastrous argument. Issa hits back at Lawrence. She's like, well, he's got more going on than woo-woo. Then Issa starts talking about Lawrence cheating on her with bank titties. Technically, he didn't. It was so ugly. It was so ugly. And Lawrence went for the jugular. He was like, you're a hoe. Lawrence didn't call her a hoe because... She's been having a lot of sex since their breakup in the same way that he has. That's about Lawrence thinking at the very least that she had sex with Daniel while they were together, which is true. But more so him thinking that Issa and Daniel had an ongoing relationship. So while I don't condone a man, any man calling a woman out of her name, you can't be really all that shocked when your ex who you cheated on 
calls you or thinks you are a hoe. That whole conversation with Issa and Lawrence, I'm not willing to rake Lawrence over the coals because they were arguing and each of them were throwing the best body blows and chin checks that they could. Lawrence just happened to throw the last one before his girl walked out and was like, hey, what's going on? And about old girl, she ain't shit. Any halfway decent woman, when the guy she came with got up from the table to go chase his ex, would have been like, nah, B, you're not ready. She would have got up and walked out. She wouldn't have got up to come interrupt their conversation and see what's up like she had claims on the dude. And Lawrence, because he wants to feel like the man, catches old girl, grabs her hand, and walks off with her. Then goes out and makes out with her. You wouldn't be making out with me after you got up from the table to go chase after your ex. I don't think Lawrence knows that she about to set him up at the office. You think you moved on to a new good thing? Sir, I see it in her. You don't. Lawrence, you in danger, dude. Back at the party, they're singing happy birthday. Molly looks absolutely miserable. Dro gets up from the table and Molly gets up and goes after him. I'm surprised Candace didn't get up and go after them. But Molly catches up with Dro and she's talking about how awkward it is. Dro hits her with the, you know how I feel about you, blah, 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 and starts like, kissing on her. They end up having sex in the bathroom. Yo, this dude is mad sleazy. And just to put the icing on the cake after you've had sex, with your side piece in the bathroom you're like okay I'm gonna go upstairs first if you weren't sure before that you were second tier Molly he made it real clear then and he also made it real clear that Candace is not supposed to know about this at the very least she's not okay with her husband sneaking out of the event to go knock down some chick who's been sitting at the table with her all night Molly comes out the bathroom Old girl looked like she'd been rode hard and put away wet. Issa spots her. As crappy as Issa's life is, your ex in the middle of the street just called you a f***ing hoe and walked off with his new chick. That's a L. She fixes her hair. She adjusts her dress. Doesn't say a word. Molly reaches over and snatches the tag off Issa's dress because our girl is broke. She ain't got no money to fix her car. She lives in a crappy apartment, but she put on a decent dress because she knew her ex was going to be there. Girl, that was a sad, sad scene. Molly leaves the party. She's got a lot on her mind for very good reason. She calls her mother, who she does not offer an apology to. But she asks her mother, she's like, why did you stay with dad after he cheated on you? Molly's mother said she stayed because she loved him. I just wanted more from her because I felt like that was a very Ricky Lake response. Like when I was in college, I used to watch Ricky Lake all the time and these women would come on and they'd be in horrible relationships. And Ricky would always ask like, but why do you stay? And the girls would always be like, because I love him. And I always wonder, does he love you? Cause if he's cheating on you, it would seem otherwise. Molly's mother said that she got past the hurt and she stayed because he made her feel special more often than he didn't. That response just seems so sad to me. I wish he had said something more like, I took my vows to God. I said for better or for worse. I just wanted to be married. We had kids and a family and I didn't want to dismantle it. Molly gets home and she gets a text from Dro. Molly texts him, I can't do this anymore. I thought from the episode where he walked out on her at the hotel that that probably wasn't going to last very long because Molly makes a lot of bad decisions, but she's not comfortable playing number two. Issa makes it home. There's a note on her door letting her know that her rent is being increased. This whole episode has just been one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. And Issa finally breaks. And by breaks, I mean she proceeds to break all the in her apartment which girl you don't lost your goddamn mind i get throwing the keys i get punching a pillow i get maybe kicking a door but you're gonna break up all your sh you're gonna you're gonna throw your alcohol at the wall you're gonna tear down the bookcase ma'am you you're having a psychotic break you need to call 911 on yourself and have yourself committed you've gone crazy and look I have my own self-destructive tendencies. They just don't involve my own house. That was some new shit. Is that black girl? I understand the emotion. I don't understand breaking your own
there's some things that white folks do that we don't do. That struck me as one of them. I can see going to somebody else's house and tearing up their keying a car, busting the windows out, a brick through the window of the car. That's not unheard of. Slashing tires. That's not unheard of. But like breaking up your own shit. I don't know about that one, y'all. Mm. But that's my recap. Let me know what you thought of this week's episode. Also, while you're here, please subscribe. We're getting really close to 10,000. Thank you so much to everyone who subscribed thus far. That's everything. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next week.